Chief of Army Staff General Upendra Dvivedi has stated that India wants to restore trust and go back to the status quo of April 2020 before Chinese incursions in eastern Ladakh led to a standoff. The statement comes a day after the Ministry of External Affairs announced that an agreement has been reached with China on patrolling rights at the LSC. The Army Chief has emphasized that India will be looking at disengagement, de-escalation, normal management of the line of actual control. He explained that there are phases in normal management as well, but as of now, the primary focus is on restoring trust. For this, both sides will need to reassure one another that they are not creeping into buffer zones that have been created. Meanwhile, the Chinese Foreign Ministry has declared that Beijing is looking at working effectively implementing the solutions and the plan. What's crucial is that amid all of this, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping are in Kazan, Russia to attend the BRICS summit. It has been four years, viewers, since our ties with China soured. But can India trust this olive branch? What really do we need to do to ensure that the LSC is secure? Taking this conversation forward with me, I have Ambassador Baswati Mukherjee. We also have with us uh, Major General J.K. Bansal, defense expert. I have Sumit Peer, political commentator, and Mr. Vijay Kranti, chairman of Chase, with us on the broadcast. Let me begin this conversation, if I can, with our defense expert. Major General J.K. Bansal, I want to understand from you, sir, if you can explain to our viewers, as far as the disengagement is concerned, what all are the points where disengagement has been achieved and which are some of the crucial points that India and China are yet to iron out. Good evening, Devika. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, you know, as a Chief of Army Staff has said that, yes, first of all, it is very, very important to ensure that uh, our points of patrolling should be pre-April 2020. There should not be any and any change in that, which is uh, has been, it appears that with the statement of Foreign Secretary, Foreign Minister, and our Chief of Army Staff that has been agreed to. Once it is being done, patrolling is being done, then there will be confidence building that they do not creep into a, in a buffer zone, which is a no man's area, and subsequently there will be a disengagement. Of course, will be there, and de-escalation is also very important because nearly 50,000 troops on these sides are located over there, uh, which is uh, costing for both sides. Then uh, we have a very really long border between China and India. It is nearly 3,400 kilometers. Now, if the tension on one place, then the tension subsequently creep up on the other places also, maybe Arunachal. Pradesh or any other part. So, with the, this kind of arrangement, uh, once the de escalation is there, then uh, I think there, there are chances that the border issue will be stabilized, which India has been saying firmly from the very beginning. And uh, even China raised the point to have trade. India completely refused that without the border issue settling we will not do that and this was the these were the efforts going from both sides the very patiently and perseverantly it has been done for last 54 months there was a 21 rounds of core commanders meeting on both sides it was in the moldo borders and uh, that patience has yielded the result which is good for india as well as for china china definitely want a business to be done they are having about one 20 billion dollars uh, trade with India and uh, India also feel that yes, the, the border issue should be settled, which is good. Now, if India wants to make any uh, infrastructures near the border, the China will not have any problem because the confidence building is very, very important and this is a win-win situation on both sides. This will pave the way for, will pave the, uh, the, 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 pave for the uh, meeting of Xi Jinping and Prime Minister during uh, this meeting of Kajan, which is going to happen, which is already started. Uh, Putin and uh, Prime Minister Modi, they are meeting, both are meeting. And this happened during 19, uh, 2017 also, before Doklam, when SEO meeting was there. Then the, during the Doklam, before the meeting, this uh, kind of settlement was there. So this is a very good sign, and I hope that yes, that this. Patience has 
uh, brought good result. There we go. Okay. All right. I want to bring Ambassador Baswati Mukherjee into the conversation as well. Ambassador Mukherjee, we have seen um, India and China, of course, uh, several meetings that have been held over the years, but there, there seems to be a renewed push and a renewed momentum towards solving the crisis at the border which arose in 2020. Uh, how do you view the recent developments? From a diplomatic and foreign policy perspective, uh, and having carefully heard my colleague, uh, Major General Bansal, uh, I would like to say that I very much welcome this development for various reasons. First, because of what has happened in Bangladesh, we need to be extra careful, as he was also pointing out, about our Northeast, about the fact that uh, if things do not go well in Bangladesh, uh, we have a problem in, in West Bengal, we have a problem in the Northeast, we have a problem with regard to the chicken's neck, etc. So it makes a lot of sense to disengage uh, at, at a very sensitive part of our border uh, so that we can focus on a possible escalation of the crisis as far as Bangladesh is concerned, because things are not going well in Bangladesh. Secondly, it's also welcome because we are being pressured tacitly by the United States through Trudeau on di different issues relating to national security, our international credibility, accusations that we are, are engaging in extrajudicial killings, etc., double standards that what is okay uh, killing Osama bin Laden in, in Pakistan is not okay for India, etc. We are being pressured and at the same time, we are being told that we need to stand up to the Chinese as a Western ally, as a Western bulwark in the Indo-Pacific, etc. If that is really the case, then these strategic partners of ours in the West should be much more supportive and much more sympathetic about our concerns with regard to our territorial integrity, with regard to the Khalistanis wanting to bring down India and have a third, uh, another partition. Which, is, which support I ha at least have not seen and I am very disappointed by the approach of these strategic partners. Finally, if there is disengagement and de-escalation and we go back to 2020, it is not for me to advise our military brass who are very competent, but I would say that we had a disappointment as, as Major General Bansal would recall, when we disengaged and they did not and we lost something that was of high strategic priority. I am sure we would, would not do that now. We would disengage simultaneously if we are able to do that and if we are actually able to go back to the situation that prevailed in 2020, I think it would be a matter of relief to us and to the Chinese that Chinese have huge investments in India and we, uh, we have no reason to get into the West Cold War with China if the West does not support us on our strategic issues. So it gives us much more balance for us to tell the West, okay, so you, ha you are trying to pull our tail in so many issues. You are trying to catch people saying, we are organizing that the government of India is responsible for this or that. In that case, we are also free to take strategic decisions. We are free to do what we want for our core national interests, just like all of you do for your core national interests. So for many, many reasons, Devika, I very much welcome this development. David. Right. I want to bring Mr. Vijay Kranti into the conversation. Mr. Kranti, from your perspective, as far as then trust building with the Chinese is concerned, uh, what is it that India really needs to focus on? Because like I said, specifically in this year, it does seem, or rather since last year, it seems that there is a renewed push in terms of the number of times India and China are getting to firstly meet at international forums and also the military engagements that are happening, the military meetings that are happening to come up with a solution for the border issue, but also as Ambassador Baswati Mukherjee pointed out, keeping in mind the situation in the Northeast. You know, one thing, uh, before coming to the issue you raised, I must congratulate our uh, diplomats, our uh, political leadership and our uh, defense leadership because this is uh, a very good example of how a government should function. And India needed this example very uh, desperately 
because what we have been seeing unfortunately for first uh, 60 years and especially after 1962 what we have seen uh, in uh, the first four decades you know uh, china has been breathing through our throat and uh, they have been able to get away with every crime every time they did the slicing of our land and our governments in new delhi never had the courage even to admit that this was happening even to ch- or leave aside challenging china or containing china but this is first time when we saw that the synergy between the political leadership between our diplomatic force and uh, our defense force has been remarkable and you will see that the talks were going on all three levels and uh, our teams from all the three uh, rounds were really doing their best and now china has been if i can say china has been forced to accept you know what india has been saying right from beginning that we should return to the status quo before what happened in galwan and uh, now that uh, china has realized that the days of uh, a, a a government which is timid which you can browbeat in new delhi is over now you have to deal with a government and a system who uh, have self respect who know uh, that they also have a point of view and they express it very strongly china has been trying to say throughout that let us forget uh, this border issue it's a it's something related to history let us leave it to history to solve it you know their strategy has been to leave all those inconvenient issues which they were which they find that they don't have uh, any point for example on india china border so called india china border it, it is basically india tibet border before they occupied tibet in 1951 and they moved overnight to our borders before that for thousands of years not for a day uh, there was uh, any chinese on the other side it was all tibet we were dealing with the tibetan system tibetan government tibetan people and now i think this is time after this understanding in india should go one notch above ahead india has to somewhere tell china that all your claims about indian land whether in arunachal pradesh or in the middle sector or in ladakh are originating from the mischief you did the illegal occupation of tibet that is why you are calling uh, arunachal as south uh, tibet so i think th- this is time india has now given a good message to china where do we stand and where what are our strengths but still i would say that this agreement should be welcome because india needs a breathing space india is now on the take off stage of development uh, in all fields including defense so we have been left behind for decades now we have started on all those fronts india needs a peaceful time to be prepared as a defense power as an economic power and as a, a a political power so we needed peace we very much need peace with china and this i i think we should welcome from that point of view but at the same time we should not forget that china has realized in last 4 years that number one their land forces don't match the indian forces very clearly that is why they have shifted over 4 years their strategy to to air defense to missiles to having new airports uh, in uh, xinjiang and in tibet and uh, they have realized that they are not a match to the indian force so india should realize should understand it and also take measures to counter the increasing chinese uh, strength uh, in in xinjiang and in tibet the air air power india should match but you know everybody knows that indian army is very very capable of uh, defending its borders and today whatever is happening i think it's a it's a very welcome uh, development and we should take pride in uh, the synergy which has been evolved over uh, last 10 years especially 
between our uh, diplomatic force, between our defense forces, between our political leadership. And I think this is time to understand that. Thank you. Okay, I want to bring Sumit Peed into the conversation as well. Sumit, same question posed to you, basis of course what we've heard from the previous panelists as well, that uh, given the current geopolitical scenario, it does become very crucial for both India and China to come up with a solution to their problems, but at the same time India of course has to be very careful in how it deals with China because let's be honest uh, and let's be real about who truly is behind the problems uh, in the Northeast, specifically in Manipur right now. Uh, thank you very much for having me on your show, ma'am. Well, let me uh, sp uh, start with the following. Let me uh, put some facts into perspective. First of all, Devikaji, the most important fact is since 1952 to 2024, China has always taken some steps which create deceit, which create smoke screens, which have tempted or intended every big government to believe that China is our friend. And let's live with the fact, India and China cannot both grow in Asia together. It has to be e India or China. Look at the economy of China. China's economy is in shambles. There are multiple examples out in internet and social media wherein they have, you know, they have four currency notes with the same number. So even if you look at the printing of the notes, they have crossed all the limits. I mean, this is all over the internet. There is visible proof on that. 48 hours before this announcement, Xi Jinping went and told PLA prepare for the war. Now look at the China. Whom are they going to get in war with? The only two countries in the world, it is India or United States of America, there is no third country where China is going to get into a war with. He has asked rocket force to revamp all the rocket technology and be prepared for an immediate war. Whom is he going to fight a war with? Saturn, Jupiter or Mars? I don't know. It's either us or them. The problem is, let me quote to you Mike Pompeo. Mike Pompeo says it doesn't matter wherever you are in the world. For Chinese Communist Party, everybody is a frontline state. And our problem is we have a border which we are sharing with them. Look, we had dominance on the Kalas range. We traded out for three friction points. Still, two friction points are there. So, patrolling is, is a cause and effect. You know, if I have a stomach ache, I'll get pimples. I can put a cream here, but does my stomach get better? I'll, I'll get pimples again. So, if your pimples are gone, if you're able to patrol to what you were able to do for 220, is a disengagement happened? How do you know the Chinese arsenal is not there? What is the comeback time for Chinese? Have they dismantled their permanent and temporary structures? Have they moved their J-30s from opposite Sikkim? Have the new airstrips be disbanded? Are the permanent structures going to be there or not going to be there? The new ammunition dumps created not to be there or not to be there? Parallel missiles and other infrastructure what we have deployed, are they going to be there or not going to be there? Because these things can lead to disengagement, not disengagement. Today, China wants India's $1.25 billion come what may at any cost. That is why they were jumping and they are agreeing to this. Look, we are at an advantageous position. We have to take this with a cautious optimism. But if you look at the Chinese history, you look at what is happening within the Chinese, you look at the Chinese economy, you look at everything what is happening around China, and you track Xi Jinping's interviews in the last few days, and what their prominent members of the Politburo have been saying, the things don't add up. I mean, this can be a good thing. Okay, let's you know buy some time. Why J-30s are deployed across Sikkim? Why near air strips are being activated? Why they are getting more and more people deployed? What happens to the mirror deployment? There's a mirror deployment here, there's a mirror deployment here. Look, by the grace of God, today we have managed to throttle the Chinese threat. They never expected us to come to that level, but we came. But, you know, having this, uh, you know, a good thing that we are able to patrol and things are back to normal. Now, when Chinese, haven't Chinese broken all the past border agreements? Yes, they have. What were they doing in Galwan? What were they doing in Tawang? Was not that a violation of the agreements? So when you talk of China and agreements are oxymorons. You, they are, there's nothing called a China agreement with Chinese. They will break agreements at their will and fancy. My only thing is that whatever you achieve diplomatically or sphere, uh, Devikaji, to be honest, only power can ensure peace. There is no paper which can ensure peace. There is no agreement which can ensure peace. If you have the power to defend the peace, you will have that power. Look, we have an advantage right now. We are there. We are able to stop them. We have taken a lot of actions against them. The business is in shambles. They are they are seeing a big pushback in their uh, flagship sector, that is EVs in US, in Europe, in Canada, in whole of the Western world. We have not let their EV industry come here. Now, if you, this, this was the primary industry. We have found lithium. Have, there's a lot of things we have found. And let me be direct and candid with you. Where does the trouble in Manipur come from? Does it come from Saturn or Jupiter? It is China. Where does the trouble in Myanmar come from? Where does your all the problems in uh, Bangladesh come from? 
is again China. Who wants a port in Bay of Bengal? Who has negotiated with Bangladeshis and who was pushing Yunus and Sheikh Hasina that I want access to Myanmar through Bangladesh to give arms to rebels? Where is Arakan's army? Where is Raksan province? How many states does Raksan province have a border with? Now this united council of eight or nine armies which China has made and they are all been funded by China, they are fermenting all the trouble in northeast. With all these challenges going on, whatever we see is a welcome step, is, is a good step to have. But conceptually, how much can you implement it, how much can you trust it, and how much it is going to give the results is, is a big, big, big question mark. At times, if you look at Shinzo, they say do the war and peace same time. Deceit is the best weapon. Win a war without fighting a bullet. So this can be also deceit, like we are trying to be friends. Hindi, Chini, Bhai, Bhai. We have heard this. What happened in the last time? Hindi, whenever you do this, Hindi, Chini, Bhai, Bhai, aapke chati mein khanjar gusaya. They will come and stab you in the back. That is what they are good at because they can't face you head on. They won't take you head on. That is what they will look. They will look for those moments wherein your defenses are out and they will take on. I think my only limited point here would be we learn our lessons from the history. We learn what is happening in the geopolitics. We know Russia-Ukraine conflict will end. We know there's a new conflict which is being started between America, Iran and possibly Israel. Now look at the another development. There was a port in Gwadar which was ready for 36 months. Pakistanis were not handing over that port to Gwadar. Yes. When Dr. Jashankar was there, that same port was given to Chinese by Pakistanis. The Vice Premier inaugurated the port. Where is that point port going to be used for? What is the relevance of that airport? Where, where are they going to do? What are they going to do with the Gwadar, which has the lowest occupancy in the whole world? Because Gwadar is not for any uh, you know, commercial purpose. It's a military port. With all those things happening, now half of Haman Tota is with them. You know, they are influencing their influence in Bhutan. They are going to Bangladesh. They are going to Myanmar. Yes. And if we think that the string of pearls is over, it is gone. Let's say it's not gone. It's a good, happy, small development in the right step. But if we concur that the things are back, things are back to normal, I think whatever advantage we have gained, we should not lose that because today we have told them they can't take an inch of our land. Okay. Trust is, is the... Is the is the treachery what we can do with our country. Okay. Trusting Chinese is the treachery what we can do with our country, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, Ambassador Vasudhi Mukherjee, bring you back to the conversation, ma'am. When we talk about not losing the advantages that we have, uh, what does that really translate into, in today's geopolitical scenarios? Well, as I had said earlier in my first intervention, and I agree with what Sumit has said, when we de-escalate, de we must do it simultaneously. One of the mistakes we did earlier was that we did not dis disengage simultaneously. We presumed the other side was as gentlemanly as we are. We forgot that a dragon can never be an elephant. We should not make that mistake now. All de-escalation measures have to be done simultaneously. We must be alert. We must remember that China is our inimical enemy. At the same time, I would say, that no country can be so stretched on all sides. We are stretched on the Pakistan side. We are stretched in an area that we thought was relatively free of tension. That's the Bangladesh-India border. We are not. We have a very difficult situation over there. I can tell you that because it's my home state. We have a huge problem in the Northeast because of the deteriorating security situation in Myanmar. And we are not sure exactly which side the Chinese are because sometimes they support the Myanmar's government and sometimes they keep quiet when the other side makes a strike. So as a result, our border agreement with Myanmar through the Myanmar's army have been destabilized. So we have had to increase our, our army patrolling on, on that border too. So in order to be, avoid being overstretched as coming from the land of Chanakya, it makes sense to have this de-escalation simultaneously. It makes sense from a diplomatic perspective to also give the signal to the West that they should not take India for granted. That if they don't support us for our core national interest, we as a sovereign country, 1.2 billion people, who, who is not a member of the, of the Security Council Permanent Five because of the Chinese veto, we also have the sovereign right to make our own decisions. If that means that we come to a working arrangement with the Chinese, so be it. If it gives us breathing space, so be it, Devika. That is how military and diplomatic personnel work, work together because our armed forces also need some breathing space. 
we also need some breathing space devika to complete building our infrastructure on the line of axle control right. to build those many pads and so many other things in which the chinese are ahead of us because for 40 years we were sleeping and doing nothing now we have caught up with the present government but we need to we need to push forward because they still have a advantage over us from the nuclear perspective they also have an advantage over us from the military perspective they have an advantage over us as far as drones and and uh, ai is concerned we have to close the gap and catch up and for that also we need some reading okay major ji ke pansal i uh, give you an opportunity to also perhaps uh, put into perspective as far as the military advantage is concerned and bridging the gap is concerned what really becomes the way forward for india you know, and also of course no developing the uh, infrastructure or uh, their, their defense is much more uh, means bigger i can say that we are spending only 80 billion dollars on our defense they are spending 300 billion dollars definitely we need to increase our this defense budget you know our economy or our gdp is more than russia russia is spending 109 billion dollars so we have to increase that as far as mr vijay has very rightly said that our soldiers are battle hardened they can fight at the high altitude while the chinese soldiers can not do that so our strength is great one thing here also i would like to tell that we did not compromise with any this because this is last four and half years this matter is going on and we did not budge whatever is correct or whatever things are there and we have to be vigilant our forces are already there which will should remain there our infrastructure structure has to be strengthened and we must use the electronic gadgets for the for the border vigilance along with our normal patrolling and uh, we have to definitely increase our budget and our military budgets and strength because dr kalam used to say that strength respect strength if we are strong we will definitely we, um, the, the enemy will also uh, will respect us and they will be scared but one thing is there that china also feel that uh, having a, a border conflict with india will have a problem for them because they are having the problem south china sea with the philippines uh, they are having a um fight with them the taiwan is there and moreover they are also anticipating in case from scum then there will be tariff um and this and this, uh, the, the, the the trade will not be as it is the america so they will lose the trade so everything together it is a very good move and we are very vigilant and i do agree that our china is creating problem whether myanmar bangladesh gwadar etc but that is a kind of proxy but whatever we can fix in border this is the very right very correct listing decision and because this is not one day affair there were a lot of efforts as, as i told the 21 um, rounds of meeting between the core commander then there was the meeting between our uh, external affair minister and mr wang it was twice in the month of july yes. and there was a meeting of uh, prime minister also in the bali and in the, in the south africa with, uh, just Uh, a very informal meeting with uh, Xi Jinping. All everything together, this should be uh, means welcomed. And uh, of course, we have to be very vigilant, as it is right. said time and again that China cannot be trusted. So we have to be very vigilant. Okay. Unfortunately, that that's all the time that I have. I I thank all of our guests uh, for joining us on the broadcast to take us through their views. Uh. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.